I'm Erica from the blog thesimplehomeplace.com and today I'm going to show you how to make homemade yogurt. Okay, so today we are going to make homemade yogurt and I wanted to do this video because it is such a great option. It's very cost effective and it's really easy to make. For homemade yogurt, you only need two ingredients. So you need whole milk and then you need a probiotic yogurt. And in this case, I'm using Stonyfield plain whole milk yogurt. And you don't have to use this brand, but you wanna make sure that it has probiotic on it. And you can turn it over and look in the ingredients and it'll talk about different cultures. So there are six live cultures in this yogurt. So that is what you wanna look for and you want it to be a plain yogurt. So those two ingredients, you're also going to need a crock pot. That is what I'm gonna to use today. You can also make yogurt on the stove or in the instant pot, um, but I'm choosing to do it in the crock pot. It's really easy and it does take some time and I'll get into that later, but this is what I'm going to use for today. Okay, so to start our yogurt, we're just going to take our milk and in this case, I am doing a half gallon. You could also do a gallon and I'll go over um, how much of your yogurt starter that you'll need to use if you do a gallon. But we're gonna make a half gallon today or two quarts. And really all you need to do is take your milk and pour it into your crock pot. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my milk in my crock pot. I'm going to put my lid onto the crock pot and turn it on low. And I wanna keep the milk for two and a half hours. So I'm gonna do that and I will see you back here in two and a half hours. Okay, it has been two and a half hours and the next thing that I'm going to do, it's super simple, I'm just going to turn the crock pot off and then we are gonna let it sit for three hours and that is to cool it down because you don't wanna add in your live culture to really, really hot milk. It's going to kill all the bacteria, the good bacteria and everything. So we're just going to let it sit for three hours. It could be a little bit longer if you forget, but maybe set a timer again if that'll be helpful. We'll let it cool down and then we'll come back for our last step. So it has been a little over three hours and I'm going to add my yogurt starter now. Again, it's the Stonyfield probiotic. What really matters is the probiotic part. And I'm going to add a half a cup. I am doing a half gallon of whole milk. So I'll add a half a cup to that. And then I will be putting it in the oven and I'll talk about the oven in a second. All right, so now we are going to add in our yogurt into the milk and again this is a half cup of yogurt for a half gallon of milk if you are going to use a full gallon of milk you could do about a cup or so of the yogurt maybe even just a little bit less and that should be good and now we are ready for the next step which is the oven so now we're ready to put our milk into the oven to let it sit and ferment so that it will turn into yogurt what I like to do is I like to turn my oven on to the lowest temperature, which is 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and then turn it off. And then I'll also put my oven light on, and that's going to help maintain a warm temperature in the oven throughout the eight to 12, you can even do it up to 24 hours that you leave your yogurt to sit and ferment. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll come back tomorrow and we'll take it from there. Okay, it is the next morning and I just pulled my yogurt out of the oven. It has been in there for about 12 to 13 hours or so. So you can really let your yogurt ferment anywhere from eight to 24 hours. And the longer that you let it sit or ferment, the thicker it'll be. It'll also have less lactose present. And if you wanna know a little bit more about that, I have a whole blog post that goes with this video and I will link it down in the description if you wanna check that out. Um, so now I am going to strain off the whey. So I will lower you down so you can see that process and then we'll add a little bit of sweetener and we'll be good to go. Okay, so to strain off the whey, what I like to do is just take my ladle and kind of push it into the yogurt so that enough of the whey collects and then I just dump it into a mason jar down the sink. You can use whey, I just have never done anything with it, so this is what I do. You could also line a strainer with coffee filters and drain it that way. 
I have not done that, but I have seen other people do that. So that is also an option. Okay, and now I am going to just stir it, make sure I incorporate any way that I didn't strain off. And you can see the more that you stir it, the texture begins to change and it's not as clumpy and that is what you want. So just keep stirring until you feel good. And then what I'm going to do is collect half a cup of the yogurt so that I can use it to make a new batch next time. And then I'm going to add in my sweetener of choice, which would be maple syrup. You could use honey, you could use any kind of sweetener that you want. I prefer a liquid sweetener, I think it's the best, but you do you. And you could also leave it plain if you want to. Now it's time to fill up our jars. Okay, that is it. I now have two quarts of homemade yogurt. I'm going to put it into the fridge, let it thicken up a little bit, and then it'll be good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do try making your own yogurt, let me know how it goes. Leave a comment down below. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.